I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and thrive the economic reset that should be pretty clear to everybody we are walking through right now. And we had so many questions that this is another Q&A this week. And I'm going to start with Lorena B Bishop. I would like to know who funds FHA loans in a mortgage. Is Federal Housing Authority a federal agency? The answer is yes, it, it, it is a quasi-governmental agency. And what they do is they issue bonds, they issue debt, and that's what actually funds and provides for the mortgages. Um, you might recall, okay, well, I'll finish reading the question. Government sponsors Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac loans. How do they differ from FHA and who funds them? Well, all of those entities are actually quasi-governmental, except for Ginnie Mae, who actually is backed by the full faith and credit of the government. So that's how they all differ. I mean, each one kind of works in a little different way, but it is investors that actually fund them. It's the government that backstops them. And you might recall, because I've done a bunch on it as we've been watching the, the uh, central banks trying to bring out that new benchmark, that they actually issue debt in terms of the new benchmark and then investors, pension plans, independent investors can buy those pieces. And that's actually what funds these mortgages. So because they're government backed, that's why they were able to say, okay, you do not have to pay these mortgages. They could give you a year's, uh, the, the, a year's mortgage forbearance on it. Now, of course it all runs downhill. But yeah, these are government or quasi-governmental agencies. And Greg Tanji asks, supposedly a country's ability to create their own currency is advantageous for them. I am wondering how non-printers as compared to those countries who can print are doing today and how will the non-printers be sitting when this whole reset is complete? Greg, let me make that, let me expand that a little bit further. Uh, a country's ability to create their own currency is uh, advantageous for them. Most countries do indeed create their own currency. The piece that needs to be put in there is the US dollar is classified as the world reserve currency. So what makes that advantage, uh, advantageous is that if you are living in another country, but going outside of your border to buy oil, lumber, medicine, anything, you had to do so with US dollars and that created an automatic market for dollars. So that's the piece of it. Now, the Euro has become a reserve currency the Chinese yuan has become a reserve currency. The Chinese yen is a reserve currency, which is why in many cases, these are considered flight to safety assets, but those are all debt instruments. So the advantage is that up until really relatively recently, we were the only country that could actually create from debt the money that we needed to repay our global debts. That's huge. Every other country would have to buy dollars from us in order to, pay, to repay their global debts because they're doing it in terms of dollars. So I hope that that helps. Uh, let's see. I'm wondering how non-printers, okay, so I think I've answered that. Uh, and how will everybody sitting when the whole re reset is completed? Well, all value and all fiat money, government-based money, will have lost all of its value. And right now they all have lost, you know, roughly 
the same that the US dollar has lost over time, which is close to 98%. And that's officially, it's probably actually more than that. And Jose Figueroa asks, could there be a possibility of a new $1,000 bill to replace the $100 bill when they reset it? Well, before they reset it, it is highly probable to have $1,000 bills, $10,000 bills, $10 trillion bills as the currency loses all value in hyperinflation. Just look at Zimbabwe, which I'm going to be talking about this week, um, or I just talked about last week, actually. I'm sorry, we're, we're recording this so I could get to all the questions. And you'll see that you could have been a billionaire in Zimbabwe and barely bought a loaf of bread. So Honeydew asks, since the Fed does not actually loan anything tangible, and it is a lie, why do we, oh, great question. Why do we as a society agree to pay it back when there is nothing to pay? Great question. Because one thing that they absolutely knew is that people marry the legal money of the state. So when a big enough lie is told over and over again through generations, the truth will seem outrageous and the speaker a raving lunatic. We have been living a lie that was sold gradually to the masses. And as long as they kept it, at least looking the way that they were used to, and I mean the public, that's who they are. So me, I mean, in 1971, I had a $20 bill in July and I had a $20 bill in September. I did not know that the entire financial system had reset from a gold-backed system to a debt-backed system. I didn't know. But I'd, you know, been used to the fiat money. So if you think about this for yourself, but you think about it for others, they did the same thing. If you took a look at what the gold certificates looked like prior to 1913, the new Federal Reserve notes, the new bills that came out, looked very similar to the old ones. And they keep the term the dollar. That's why I think we're going to have a dollar coin because that's what people are used to. And they marry the legal money of the state because they hope. And I'll, I'll give you this whole big quote. I don't have it in front of me and I don't have it memorized. But people believe that they can't believe that it would lose all value. They think that it has to come back and retain some value. And when they set up the monetary system where now we're looking, oh, strong dollar. Well, strong dollar against the euro or the yen or another currency, another fiat money. But weak dollar in that it buys you less and less and less over time. So why do we accept it? Because, because most people don't know any better. And that's really the point of my work. Because if we can get 3% of the population to know what I show you here and know this lie, well, when they transition us into the next financial system, then maybe we'll have a say. And maybe, just maybe, the money might be hold its value more so that you're fairly paid for your labor and you're able to save for your future. Maybe. I hope so. That's what I'm working for. Excuse me. Okay, and Jay Adams asks, if the dollar tanks with respect to other currencies, will my cost for gold decrease temporarily or will it just inflate in all currencies? Well, actually, in almost every other currency that I look at, Gold is at new highs, new all-time highs. It is in the U.S. dollar where we're not yet seeing those new highs. So if the dollar tanks in respect to other currencies, your gold is not going to decrease temporarily because gold is the universal money. That's why it's so critically important that you hold it. 
dollars really only have value in the US. I remember in the 90s going to France and going into, you know, the little community, um, what, what, what are they called? I'm losing it right now. Uh, but, you know, where everybody meets and they sell stuff. So swap meets or uh, it's not really called a swap meet, but something like that. And boy, if you paid in dollars, they gave you a discount. They wanted dollars instead of francs because the dollar was stronger as compared to the franc. Today, mm, no, they don't even want them in Mexico, our neighbors. So, but gold, I could take gold anywhere in the world and instantly have that same level of purchasing power or more. So, yeah, no, it won't. It's already inflated. And it's, it's more reflective in other currencies. And I, I could do something on that. Um, Jacqueline, would you write that down? And I'll just put a little PowerPoint together of gold in a bunch of different currencies so that you can see that it's making new highs. I've, I've done that in the past, but it's, it's a while and this is probably a good time to do it again. Ian Wilson asked, do we expect a drop in gold and silver by the coming month end? Well, anything can happen, but Ian, um, I would say no, because we are in the process of a breakout. It doesn't mean that we can't get a little pullback, but uh, the more likely next uh, occurrence is going to be that it's going to go higher. And M88 is taking a loan to buy gold and silver still a no-no. Yes, yes, it is a no-no. Uh, you've got to do what you're comfortable with, but I would not take out debt because even though I know it's going higher, I don't know when. And I do know some people that made that choice, even though I tried to talk them out of it. And if you need that money, uh, if that fiat, before you're ready to liquidate your gold, you, you could have a little bit of a problem. So you've got to do what you're comfortable with, but that is not the choice that I would make. I will say that. And, oh, and Marilyn D. asked, what is MBS? MBS stands for Mortgage Backed Security. So it is a contract that's made up of a bunch of mortgage contracts. And the Federal Reserve is buying those mortgage backed securities so that banks have more money to lend for mortgages. And Pax Vobiscum asks, sorry, I'm a little parched. If confiscation takes place, I do know how to melt down gold and turn it into jewelry. Will that work? It could. Yeah, absolutely, it could. Because certainly there is a greater markup in jewelry, so it would be in more toward the classable collection. So, will that work? I can't guarantee it, but you would have a shot. You know, it's not the choice that I've made because I just think it's easier, especially with the premiums on the collectibles being so low, that, you know, that, that's where my level of comfort is, and that's why I've made that choice. So, last week, I was on with Mario and Echo on Manico 64, and because this is pre-recorded, I'm sorry. I don't really know how it went. But since I've talked to him before, I'm certain it was awesome. And I would encourage you to watch it. Now, this coming week, I've got two new places that I'm going to be on. And so I'm very excited about that, really. Being interviewed by Terry Saccone for the Atlantis Report. And also on As Good As Gold in Australia. So I love going all around the world. I mean, I wish I could do it in person. But make sure you visit our blog at itmtrading.com forward slash blog. And of course, this is going to be posted on Brighteon as well as Facebook. So seriously, if you are concerned about the economy and you have any questions about anything we've talked about today or anything else, I have a really bright team of people that are ready to be of service. Now, they're executing the same strategy for you that I'm executing for myself that's based upon those repeatable patterns. And at this juncture, you're using gold and silver 
to accomplish sustaining your standard of living as well as expanding your income on the other side of this mess. Don't wait. Don't wait. You know, I don't know how nasty it's going to be, but I can tell you this. Technically speaking, gold has broken out. It is not getting cheaper. And you have silver that's now up like a couple bucks in a very short period of time. It's well over 18 bucks headed toward 19 bucks an ounce. It's still in both cases severely undervalued. What are you waiting for? Seriously, what are you waiting for? So understand that we are here to help and it is absolutely positively time to cover your assets. And what will cover them is your financial shield that is made up of physical gold and physical silver. So if you like this, please subscribe, hit that bell. We'll let you know when we're going live and please give us a thumbs up. And if we can be of service, don't forget to give us a call at 888-696-4653. And until next we meet, please, please be safe out there. Bye-bye.